World Geography, Latin America, Geographic Foundations. Here are the learning objectives. One, name the main physical features of Latin America. Two, explain why most South Americans live on the eastern and northern coasts. Three, describe the purpose of the Panama Canal. Four, what factors influence the Latin American climate? Five, name the original inhabitants of the region and describe what happened to them once European explorers arrived. Six, describe the cultural background of Latin American inhabitants. Political features. Here you have a political map of Latin America. You'll notice that it stretches all the way from Mexico in the north to Chile in the south in Argentina. Take a minute to look at this map and identify the major countries in the region and their location to one another. Physical features. Overview. Latin America, it's an enormous region. It stretches from the border between the United States and Mexico all the way to the tip of South America, where you find an area called Tierra del Fuego, the land of fire. That's almost 7,000 miles. It includes part of North America. Mexico is part of North America. It includes all of Central and South America, and then also the Caribbean islands. It's bounded by the Atlantic, the Pacific Oceans, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Caribbean Sea. Mountains. On the western edge of South American continent, pretty much from all the way from the north to the south, are the Andes Mountains. And this is also the eastern edge of what we referred to in an earlier video as the Ring of Fire. This is an area where there's a lot of tectonic plate movement, and so you're going to find volcanoes and earthquakes. The Andes Mountains have always been a barrier to movement into the interior of the continent, and that's why most South Americans live along the eastern and the northern coasts of the continent, and not on the western coast. Up in Mexico, you find the Sierra Madre Occidental and the Sierra Madre Oriental Mountains, and wedged between them is the semi-arid and very high Central Mexican Plateau. That's a plateau is a high area, like a mountain, but with a flat top. Here's a map of the physical features of the continent. If you look closely, you can identify the mountains we just spoke about in Mexico. And particularly in South America, you want to locate the Andes Mountains on the western coast of the continent. Isthmus of Panama. The Isthmus of Panama connects central to South America. An isthmus is a narrow strip of land linking two large land masses. Since this area is a narrow strip of land, this is where they decided to build the Panama Canal across the isthmus in the early 1900s. And the purpose of the canal is to allow ships to travel between the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans without going all the way around the South American continent. It's a shortcut. If you look closely on this map, you can identify the um, Isthmus of Panama and the Panama Canal. And you can more closely see up in Mexico the two mountain ranges that we spoke of earlier. Tierra del Fuego means land of fire. 
and it's an archipelago, which is a stretch of water containing many islands. It lies off the southernmost tip of the South American continent, just across what's called the Strait of Magellan. Ships have always, in the past, before the Panama Canal, had to make the treacherous voyage around the Cape Horn. This is an area between the Tierra del Fuego and Antarctica, and they use a, a narrow passageway in the water called the Drake Passage, named after the famous explorer Sir Francis Drake. There's a map of the southernmost tip of the South American continent, and you can see some of the features that we just spoke about. Amazon River, another important physical feature of the continent. Down in South America, the Amazon River flows 4,000 miles from the west all the way across the continent to the east, and it empties into the Atlantic Ocean. It starts high up in the Andes, and then actually the Andes at that point are very close to the Pacific. The Amazon River has the largest drainage basin in the world. It drains a huge area, and it accounts for about 20% of the total river flow in the whole world. Lots of water in this region. This is an, um, an equatorial region near the equator, so you have lots of rain. Very wet. If you look at this map closely, you can identify the Amazon River and some of its tributaries. And you can see that it begins in the Andes, but it ends in the Atlantic on the East Coast. Climate and Vegetation Climate Factors the factors affecting the Latin American climate region include at least three things. The first is there's a great span of distance on either side of the equator. So the climate can be you know, quite different in the northern from the southern. At the southern tip of South America, it's getting quite chilly. You're getting near Antarctica. And then near the equator, of course, it's much warmer. The second factor is the vertical climate zones in the mountainous areas. So anytime you get near the Andes, as you go up the mountain, you're going to enter one climate zone, and then another one, and then another one. Every time you go up in altitude, the climate zone slightly changes. And the third factor is the warm Atlantic Ocean currents and the cold Pacific Ocean currents. Particularly on the Pacific side, the cold ocean current makes that western side of the continent quite, um, quite dry. And so you get areas like the Atacama Desert, which is actually considered to be the driest place on Earth. There's no human continental climate subregion in Latin America. And that's pretty unusual because there's quite a few of them in the northern hemisphere. But I don't believe there's any human continental climate subregions south of the equator in the southern hemisphere. Broadleaf Evergreen. The most common Latin American vegetation is the broadleaf evergreen forest. We often call this the rain forest, or in some areas it's called the cloud forest. The world's largest rain forest, just like the world's largest river, it's the Amazon. And it has more biodiversity than many places or most places on Earth. Llanos Cerrado Pampas. These are all just fancy names for what we refer to as the plains here in the United States. In Colombia and Venezuela, you have um, the plains are called the Llanos, and these are just grassy, treeless areas. You use them for livestock grazing and farming. If you go down to Brazil, you have interior plains, and again, these are areas that are flat. In this case, they receive a moderate rainfall, and the soil is very poor. But if they just use fertilizer and put nitrogen into the soil, so these are soil correction techniques, 
then it does make the soil suitable for farming and for the grazing of cattle. And then in northern Argentina and Uruguay, you have lowland plains called pampas. These are near the coast and they're grasslands. Again, you have cattle raising and in this area you have wheat grain production because it's a little cooler down in this region. Good for wheat. And if you look on this map, you can identify the Llanos up near Venezuela and the um, Pampas down near Argentina and Uruguay. And I don't believe that they list the Cerrado on this map. Culture. Original inhabitants. The original inhabitants of the region were the Incas. They lived in the Andean highlands. The Aztecs, who lived in central Mexico. And the Mayans of southern Mexico and northern Central America. Once the Europeans arrived, of course, they brought their disease and war with them. And um, the Inca and the Aztec in particular, who controlled vast thriving empires, they disappeared almost overnight because of war and disease. Spanish and Portuguese. The majority of Latin America was colonized by the Spanish and the Portuguese. Throughout the 1800s, Latin American countries, one by one, won their independence from Spain and Portugal. And so now when you go to the um, South America and other Latin American countries, Mexico, Central America, you find that Spanish is the predominant language. And then in Brazil, it's Portuguese that's the predominant language. You also find many people in the region of African ancestry because slavery was predominant in this region as well as in North America. Most Latin Americans practice some form of Christianity, either Catholicism or they are evangelical Christians. The end. Thank you for listening.